in your opinion, what are some of the other kind of um, let's go into say the the obstacles and barriers um, because obviously what we saw um, in the last cycle we really saw um, you know coming into the market in uh, 2016 2017 if someone had said Troy oh in 2021 uh, Bitcoin's going to be on major news headlines next to the S and P 500 and things like that I, I would have just laughed at people going this is this is a joke like people aren't going to take this seriously but then it's really been taken seriously yeah and it's got to a point do you feel like there's kind of like a like a cap what do you think are like some of the main barriers to real widespread bitcoin uh, adoption and, and how do you think that um, they can be overcome well i think that you know in that 2017 uh, kind of time period i think one of the really big barriers was well isn't that just for criminals right and i think that generally as an industry we've pretty much moved past that which is really great like sure there's still people that might think that but at this point it's gone kind of mainstream enough that people are like, okay, this is a thing that's happening in the world. It's not necessarily some illicit, you know, type of tool. Um, so that's exciting to see. But in terms of like, I'd say current barriers is we're seeing a lot of negative pushback from the SEC, right? And so that I think creates um, just a really huge mental barrier of people being like, well, if they're kind of frowning upon this and they are, you know, maybe making it difficult from a regulatory perspective that may maybe I should just not get involved in that. And again, that I think depends on how, who we're talking about and how, you know, tapped into financial markets and their understanding of financial markets they are versus just kind of your everyday consumers. So I would say your everyday consumer might not be like, well, you know, Gary and the SEC said this, they probably aren't really paying attention, right? Um, so their barriers are going to be different than someone who does pay attention to financial markets. But for that group of people that maybe they are investors or they are, you know, just in general kind of aware of these things, um, I could absolutely see all of this negative pushback and uncertainty of like, okay, well, are things going to get delisted? Am I going to have trouble with this? Like, what's going to happen? Maybe I should kind of, you know, stay on the sidelines. I do think that um, the um, approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs, you know, if that ever mm -hmm. happens, um, which I mean, it should, right? Like, I think that that's a really strong positive back to kind of rebuilding that, um, I would say almost sense of security in the financial markets. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think we have still a really, really long way to go in terms of it just being this completely mainstream adopted thing where people are like, oh, yeah, of course I have some of that in my portfolio. That's just part of a diversified, you know, portfolio. I think that we're not there yet. And a lot of that, I think, is due to the just the regulatory lack of clarity and, and concerns that people have, because it's it, it's not easy, you know, to, to know what's going to happen. And that definitely is something that people, I think, pay attention to when they're deciding where to put their money. Hi, this is Leah Thompson at Gurgon Crypto, and you're watching Think Smart Education.